Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you just how easy it is in 2022 to add more games to your Sega Genesis Mini. This is Mike from Michael B. The Game Genie, and let's get started. So that's right guys, today we're going to be showing you how easy it is to mod your Sega Genesis Mini in 2020 thanks to the Hackchi mod. And believe me, I'm not a modder or a hacker, I'm not really a computer adept, so the fact that I can do it means anybody can literally do it. So for those of you guys who've been following me for a while, you know that I usually buy two of these mini consoles every time they come out. I get one that I leave stock because I love stock stuff, and then I get one to mod and fool around with. With the Sega Genesis Mini, I didn't do that initially. I actually just bought the one and said that'll be enough. However, after a while, I got really interested in possibly picking up a second one to mod them. The only problem is they got a little bit hard to get. However, I went to the brick about two weeks ago Ago, and they had some old Sega Genesis mini stock that was still there around a hundred bucks and I was him and Han on whether or not I was going to buy it until I went in the other day to look for the Killer Instinct arcade one up and sitting there on the clearance shelf was the mini for $48 and I thought now was the time to jump on this and finally pick one up and mod it. So anyways now that I have this device in my hands let's take a look at how easy it is. So guys, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to GitHub Team Shinkansen Hakchi 2.c releases. Don't worry guys, you're not going to have to remember that. I'll leave a link down in the description below. But if you head over to the Hackchi page, this is where you're going to be able to download the Hackchi app that will let you update your device. So you can either add the portable zip to bring it in or just do the installer. I did the installer. Just click on it, agree to everything, and let Hackchi have full control of your device. You might want to make sure you have your software, security software and everything turned off just to make sure it works okay. Hit install and you are good to go. So because I was stupid and I didn't put Hackchi on my desktop, I go in here and I find it under my recommenders, recommended settings or I just type in Hackchi, bring it up and it just takes a minute for it to come up and it also updates the game list. Now what you're going to get is it'll list off the original games, it'll usually build those. I uh, have hidden the Japanese games because I'm not going to play those. You can leave them on if you want, but they're going to take up valuable space, which we'll talk a little bit about later. I did leave the U.S. games, the original games, because uh, you can take them out and add your own, but I just decided to leave the original as their own uh, as their own folder. I I'm a stock guy. I can't help myself, guys. But then what you do in order to add more games, you can see I've got the entire... Uh, Sega Genesis uh, library, US library, all from backups from my original games, wink, wink. Uh, I've already got them added. In order for you to add more games, you're just going to click add more games. You're going to go to a folder where you have your ROMs. I've got mine in a special place called Mike's Laptop, Personal ROMs, Genesis. All you have to do is click on that game, hit open, and it'll load it up for you to add. So then once you get the games added that you wanted, uh, then the next step is to actually connect your Sega Genesis. So what you're going to do is you're going to have to actually get your Genesis out and you're going to have to connect it to your PC where this is running through a micro USB cable. Now the problem is the system actually comes with a micro USB cable that connects to your charging port. However, the micro USB cable doesn't have any data lines, so you're going to need a separate cable. Now, me personally, the easiest thing for me to use was just, I have a bunch of these mini consoles around. I just used a cord from my Nintendo Classic. I already modded the exact same Nintendo Classic with Hackchi back in the day, so I know it works. So, I'm going to get that cord out. Now, you're not going to install it right away. What you're going to do is you're going to go up here to Kernel, and then you're going to hit Install Repair, and it says, do you want to flash the custom kernel? You're going to click Yes. And it says, please do the following. Unplug the USB cable from the mini. Turn the power switch to the on position. While holding reset, plug the USB cable into the mini and let go when flashing initiates. So now guys, we're doing exactly as the steps told us. We're gonna turn on the on button, hold reset, connect our USB, wait for the light to flash and boom. That should connect the system and it'll upload and run the program. 
Now that the kernel is uploading, we wait for that to upload. And once it's complete, our device will be connected and we can then finally add more games to our Sega Genesis Mini. Now, during this process, your Mini will reboot. Please don't be concerned about this. It doesn't mean that your device is broken. Uh, this is natural for the process, and sometimes you'll even get an error saying it's taken a while for your Mini to reboot, and you may have to try again. Don't freak out. Very easy. Just wait for your Mini to reboot, and uh, part of the process. So the system is rebooted. We're still waiting for it to install Hatchy, but you can notice down on the bottom, we've got the green light. That means our system is online and we are good to go with the Sega Genesis Mini once Hatchy finishes installing. This is actually moving pretty quick. I might not even have to fast forward this, which I was fully anticipating to do. <laughs> and we go through the reboot process again. Fingers crossed. No issues with the reboot. Ah, there we go. Done. You can now upload games to your Sega Genesis Mini. Let's rock and roll, guys. So as you guys can see, I've already got a bunch of games uploaded. Uh, the Addams Family, Adventures of Batman and Robin, Afterburner 2. I, I uploaded the entire library, like I mentioned, that I legally have backups of. Wink, wink. So what I did was... Unfortunately, the Sega Genesis Mini has a limited memory. For those of you that have hacked your Super Nintendo Classic, you've been through this song and dance before. For some reason, there's not enough space to fit the entire library. Obviously, it wasn't intended to do so, uh, unlike the NES Classic where you can add every single game. So you're only going to be able to add 190.9 megabits of game. So I had to painstakingly, because I had everything selected, go through this and do a very uh, dedicated list of making sure I got the ones that were the absolute most important to me. So what I did was I kept all the original games and then I went through the library and picked and choose very carefully. If you don't want to do that, there is another way to add the entire library. You can get extra storage space by exporting to a USB and uh, you can also do other shit too. Like if you want to further cannibalize the system, you can add retro arc and then have multiple consoles playing off this. Now, if you guys are interested in learning more about that, I advise you to go check out my buddy Rostalgia's channel. He is a wizard when it comes to hacking systems. I don't really know what he does for a living. I believe he's Neo from The Matrix. But if you're interested in learning how to hack anything that's ever been put on this earth, Rostalgia probably already has you covered. So go check out his shit. It's, in fact, the video I initially watched to learn how to hack my Sega Genesis Mini in the first place. But since this video's come out, there's been a couple new features with the new hack G, and I wanted to show that anybody could do it, even a simpleton like myself. But you can go check out Rostalgia's video. He'll show you how to export to a USB and to add extra consoles and systems onto the Sega Genesis Mini, if you will. So back to our loading process, I'm going to keep this as stock as possible. I'm not going to use the USB, I'm just going to use the included games. So I've got 188.2 megabytes of games selected. So guys, if you go on this, you can see that I already have artwork added to the game. So that's what they'll show up like when you go into the Sega Genesis Mini. In order to do that, all you're going to do is you basically right click on the games that you want. And then... You basically select the games that you want. If you hit control, you can add multiple. You're going to hit right click and then you're going to say scan for new box art for selected games and it will add it and will include it there. Now, if you're not happy with anything, you can also go in and change it piece by piece like spine, for example. Uh, we can also look at the other options. We've got Genesis, Genesis USA, Mega Drive. So we want the Genesis USA to match the box. We're going to hit OK, and then we can change it. So pretty simple process. You can get everything looking just the way you want it. There you go. Adventures of Batman and Robin will do the same thing again. Let's go into Spine and we're going to change it to USA Red Stripes because that looks the best. Now if you get down here to Afterburner, Afterburner looks good. So Spine, we can change that as well. 
but it's where it should be. So hit OK. Anyways, loads of customizable options. You can make this thing look good. Now, when you're done, you've got everything happy. You've got the games you want selected. I've got 270 games on this son of a bitch. I've got the games that I want there. When you're happy, I made this mistake the first time I did it. I thought I was just done. Then you're going to have you're going to have to hit synchronize games, synchronize select the games with the mini. Once you hit that, it's going to process, calculate your free space, and install the games to your Sega Genesis mini. You're almost done. And just like that, guys, we are toasty. We now have 270, 269 games on our Sega Genesis Mini, and we're ready to rock and roll with some of the best games that were ever put there. So guys, you should see the Hackchi logo now on startup, and then after that, it should boot up like it normally would. And there we go with the original games, but oh my god, what's that? Mortal Kombat 2, that's not supposed to be on there. If you scroll all the way down past your original games that you left on the console, you'll see a section there for more games. This looks awfully similar to what we saw on the NES Classic when doing the uh, console mod. So we'll hit A there, and then you go into your first lineup, and you can take a look at some of the amazing stuff we have here. Arrow Flash, which is an awesome shooter. Dick Tracy, which is actually a really good game. One of my favorites on the system. Uh, it's actually a really good licensed game, which is one of the things Sega Genesis did a lot better than Nintendo, especially in the early days. Come down here, Streets of Rage 1, which is a game that absolutely should have been on the Sega Genesis Mini. So I'm um, glad I did the hack there. We'll go down here, then you can get to your other games, which are listed by title. So I want to go right here to find the game that I'm looking for specifically. Before we get there, props for Gyres. I, I always say that wrong. Gyres. I don't know how to say it right, but I want to show you guys Ghostbusters, which is one of my absolute favorite Sega Genesis games. As you can see, the game works well flawlessly. Uh, I used to have this game when I was full-on collecting Sega Genesis cartridge games back in the day. Uh, I have only played it through emulation on Raspberry Pi and other shit like that for the last little while. And let me tell you, I miss playing it with the appropriate controls for once. This feels good. It's good to be back home and playing this the right way. It runs really super well on the Genesis. Very happy to have this added to my Genesis Mini. Then to get out of the game, you just hit your reset button. You can go down here, return to the main menu like normal. You've got your save slots, everything you normally would have. Another game I want to show you here is Troubleshooter, which is a Vic Tokai game. Uh, may not be the most popular game with a lot of people, but I absolutely love it. On the last days of me having my physical Genesis collection, this is the one that always seemed to be in my Genesis. So for those of you that have never played Troubleshooter before, you are in for a treat. This is just a fantastic game, and it works so well on the Genesis Mini after doing the hack. It's a fun shooter game, one of my personal favorites. So excited to be able to play this with the right control and controllers again. Uh, it makes all the difference in the world. Uh, playing it on an emulator, even though it's good, it's just not the same. This is an emulator designed for the Sega Genesis, and everything just looks great. I mean, graphically... Such a beautiful game. All the Genesis stuff looks amazing running on the Genesis Mini with the Hack Chi mod. Unfortunately, not everything works perfectly, though, because you have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Hyperstone Heist, one of the best games on the Genesis, their version of the arcade game with some change features, and it may be the best home console version of Turtles. That's arguably, arguable, I guess, but I was always a really big fan of it. You can get it to play on your Sega Genesis Mini. Unfortunately, though, with the emulator, there's a problem. And once the game starts, there is no audio. It still looks good, still plays good. You just can't hear anything, which is a real shame because who wants to play a game without the audio? That's why you're going to have to rely on my buddy Rostalgia and his uh, hack chi mod that also includes RetroArc. So guys, like I said, that's all there is to it. Modding the Sega Genesis Mini really is that easy. And again, if I can do it, anybody can do it. And thankfully now, I have a really cool little mini Sega Genesis Mini. 
<laughs> with everything I have ever wanted on it realistically. And for those of you who want like the full library or you want to see what else your system could do, maybe run Sega CD games, maybe run Super Nintendo and other shit like that, go check out my buddy's nostalgia's videos. He's the king of hacking. Go check him out for all your hacking needs. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think. Is hacking the Sega Genesis Mini something you guys are interested in or something you guys have already done? And if so, what games did you add to the console that you thought absolutely had to be there? Anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed this little fun video today talking about my experience and hacking a Sega Genesis Mini. Thank you very much for watching. This is Michael B. The Game Genie. And I'll talk to you next time.